powered by AgriGold for Central Illinois. For your AgriGold reps, Brett Lars. Uh, he is your AgriGold reps for Central Illinois. This is your Commodity Markets Update on the Markets Club podcast on today. This podcast is powered by Allendale Inc. with Kyle Bumstead. Well, we were talking about the corn yields for in the central U.S. Here's Kyle Bumstead from Allendale Incorporated. We were talking about the corn yields in central U.S. with Kyle Bumstead from Allendale Incorporated. This podcast is getting it on each other's Wednesday. Stay tuned on the Markets Club. This break is present by AgriGold for Central Illinois. AgriGold is best variety of seeds in Central Illinois. Find your AgriGold reps for today or AgriGold. Come. This is your overnight export numbers to China. Corn sale was 100.000 metric tons to China. However, soybean sale was 130.000 metric tons of soybean. Let's go with Mexico. Export sale was 359. 500 metric tons to Mexico for overnight delivery. This been your export numbers on back roads of Illinois. This is opening bell numbers of the commodity markets from Kyle Bumstead from Allendale Inc. Corn futures are down at 5 to 10 cents. Soybean futures are down at 5 to 6 cents. Wheat futures are down at 4 to 8 cents. This is your livestock market, Sunback Roads of Illinois. Cattle futures are up 5 to 6 cents. Feeder cattle are up at 3 to 4 cents. Lean hogs are down at 3 to 6 cents. Crude oil are down to 9 to 5 cents per barrel. Dow Jones are up. The corn yields in the dairy markets. Presidential election is coming up on next following week on Tuesday, November 5th. We were talking all of this right here on Back Roads of Illinois with John Heinberg from Total Farm Marketing for today's program. How are things in the green markets? Oh, good morning or good morning. Good afternoon, Caesar. Let's get right into it. Yeah, grain markets today. Mixed trade, a little bit higher today. I'm, I'm pretty much across the board with the exception of that front front end bean contract. Now, a couple things going on here. First off, things that are supportive. You know, we've seen some really good demand. Weekly export sales today mm. were big for corn, over 3.3 million metric tons. You know, we knew a good chunk of that was coming because of that big Mexico sale last week and and we've had our just our daily announcements so we knew a good portion was coming but it was nice to see another portion out there that was you know unannounced per se <clears throat> excuse me you know that helps support has been helping support the market here over the last couple of or last handful of sessions you know going over into the soybean side of things there same thing there really good export sales number we're seeing business continue to grind higher you know still it's keeping the big picture here though now we're at the fourth Worst soybean sales in the last ten years. We, you know, a couple month, about a month back, we're the worst soybean sales in ten years. So we've at least seen some improvement. But if you put the numbers together, we're still about 100 million bushels behind the pace that we need to meet the USDA's sa export sales target. So we need to keep beans moving. We need to keep the sales coming on the books. You know, maybe with this later start in that Brazil crop because of their weather and that dry weather, that postponed planting, that might be enough to help keep that window open a little bit longer for exports. So we'll have to see. 
The other big thing, a lot of people don't really kind of focus on it, but November options expire tomorrow. So that brings a lot of volatility into the marketplace this week. I think some of the reason we've been higher this week has been money flow for that. Typically, the market likes to move mm. to where the most open positions are. And for beans, it was nine or the $10 handle, which uh, if you guys had $10 puts at the end of last week, uh, now those are basically worthless here as the market has gone through and kind of gone after that premium. And on the corn side, it was the 420 area. Now, we don't have November futures, but we do have November options. And there was a lot of 420, 420. Uh, calls and puts. So I'm not surprised that we kind of hit that wall here today and couldn't really get through that 420, 421 area. So tomorrow will be a very key day with that. So uh, then we go over the wheat market, solid day in export sales, just within expectations. You know, we're still watching the weather forecast, still watching going on the global trends in wheat, probably maybe moving more of a factor of corn versus uh, wheat itself, picking up a couple pennies today. So again, we'll see how the weekend's out. It's been a good week so far overall. Uh, but we hit some pretty good resistance today uh, that seemed to kind of hold the market in check here, especially at the closes. Just read mm. my mind that how are the November beans for today? Yeah, you know, there's been a very interesting market, that November bean contract. And, you know, let's kind of get into a couple things that have been happening. First off, watching the spread between November and January, we've really seen that, that carry disappear. That was a market that was trading basically about 19 to 20 cents difference between November and January a couple about a month ago. And now it was, well, today it was down to seven cents at one time, finished the day at nine cents. You know, so we've taken a lot of carry out of the market and that's kind of atypical in a heavy supply year. I do think that's uh, just a factor of a bunch of things coming together. Number one, there's good demand. So there's people looking for beans. This is our export window for beans to shine now till probably the end of November. And then we really kind of tail off on those export shipments for beans. Number two, the beautiful weather. Farmers have just been grinding and grinding without a break getting this crop off, both soybeans and corn. So there's so as they kind of move through the soybeans, they went right into the corn. So not a lot of supplies are moving. And then you throw in those transportation issues around the Gulf. You know, with the low water levels in the Mississippi River, and it just really saw some a premium come into that Gulf basis, and that's kind of helped support the front of the soybean market. But now today, maybe we got a little bit of a reversal in that spread, so that could be a signal that you know maybe the pipeline pipeline is finally starting to get filled up here. And that soybean spread may come back and put some carry on it, and that would be negative to that front month November bean contract. Let's start with our conversation about the carryout numbers from the beans complex. Could you tell our listeners about this? We were in another two weeks away from the election, John. Sure. You know, first off, let's touch base on those carryout numbers. And, you know, that's still the biggest bearish number that's out there of all the grains right now is the soybean carryout. USDA's got us about 540 million bushels. That's the third largest, or actually it's the largest going back to the trade war years, 2019 area. You know, so that's something that's going to weigh on this market here is going to be the amount of supply that's out there. Now, with that, we're, you know, we'll have to see where this bean crop ends. Wouldn't be surprised in the November report gets here. The USDA shaves a little bit more off the yield because of that dry weather. Then it still comes down to the demand. Now, we're seeing some good demand here, but like I stated, we're way behind yet or still behind on where we need to to reach those USDA targets for exports. We got to meet that target of that 100 million bushels I just mentioned that we're still off pace on. You know, that gets added to that carryout. So, you know, right now we kind of got the supply in pace. It's all going to be focused on the demand. Where's our demand in beans? It's going to be from the crush, which was strong last month. It's going to be from exports. You know, so those are going to be the key factors that we really need to keep seeing those U.S. beans moving. Probably get, need to be seeing more grind here domestically to kind of chew through that supply. In regards to the election, we got the election coming up here in a couple of weeks. You know, just how does that play in the marketplace? First off, it's a it's a high volatility volatile event, so we're gonna probably see a lot of choppiness between now and November fifth, and probably right after the election as we kind of digest whether who's in charge. Not gonna go into you know who who or what in that regard in terms of politics, but this is how the market's gonna react. You know, obviously markets have feelings one way or another based on who gets elected and what that could pose for the future. So so I expect to see a lot of things maybe bouncing around here over the next couple of weeks 
next year until we get that decision made on November 5th. The areas you may see more movement will be some of those bigger outside markets, equity markets, U.S. dollar, you know, interest rates on the bonds, as well as maybe like crude oil in terms of how policy might dictate what happens with those markets going into the next four years. I saw that on the carryout numbers were 100.000 metric tons to China. How concerned for this number? You know, you're talking Chinese carryout. I mean, obviously, um, for on the soybean side, they are still a major importer. On the corn side, looks like they got themselves a pretty good crop this year, uh, possible strong yields which is going to keep the corn market in terms of them being the export market probably a little bit limited. We've seen some very good purchases from other people and other countries over the last couple of weeks. Japan's back in the market. Europe, you know, we saw some too. I think that's all going to be driven by pe by cheese prices. At least right now we're in football season. Demand is kind of settled in here a little bit here. A lot of pizzas being made and delivered during this time frame, and that does, believe it or not, help support those mozzarella, those types of cheese prices, which can keep some support in the milk market. What is the production for milk in Wisconsin on every single year? You know, we go look at milk production, Wisconsin, trying to find the exact number here for you. But again, it's been fairly steady over the last handful of months. Start seeing some slight increase there. You know, obviously, Wisconsin, California, those are some of the two key states in terms of milk production. You know, so we look at it more on the national level in terms of where things are. Again, Wisconsin milk production was on the decline as the margins are pretty thin. But as now prices have come back around here, at least in that September window, August, September, you know, we saw that milk production start ramping back up again. That's still going to be something that dictates price going forward. Is there anything would you like to tell our listeners about cattle on feed for tomorrow and CFT zero power? Yeah, cattle on feed numbers coming out for the month of October tomorrow or, you know, at the at covering basically September. The number I'm watching, you know, first off, total cattle on feed just a little bit under last year. Placements are expected to be down about 5% from last year. Now, that scares me a little bit. I see a number there that can be a surprise in one way or another. Uh, so I just wanted to you know, keep an eye on that as we get into those numbers tomorrow. Now, cattle numbers still stay tight. That keeps this market supported. Now, today we got some pretty good cash trade, another dollar higher, maybe even two. Seeing some 190 trade triggering out there. That's what brought the late afternoon strength into the cattle market. Now, the only thing that makes maybe a little bit of concern now, retail values may have peaked out here a little bit and rolled over the last couple of days, down about three, four bucks off of yesterday's highs. So we'll have to see if that's going to be a trend now, which we kind of see this time of year. We could see those retail values start to tumble, but that retail demand has helped us cash market stay very very intact even despite the heavy cattle that we're producing out there as carcass weights are still running well ahead of averages and last year what is the placement numbers for the last month you know, last month in terms of we were just a little bit below where we were the previous year. Like I said, tomorrow we're looking at 95% of last year. And that sounds like a pretty low number that would really keep those spring prices in terms of April, June, you know, out into August supported if we do get those lower placement totals there. So that'll be a kind of number we're watching now. Again, with the cost of grains coming down, the inputs in terms of feed, Maybe that placement number is a number I'm a little worried about that could get a bit of a bearish surprise. If we happen to get more cattle into the lots, we have the room. Now it's just a matter of if the cattle were there to fill the lots. Do you have any final thoughts or recap of our conversation? I really think tomorrow's going to be a very interesting day in a lot of these markets, and especially in the grains. Let's see how we close out for the week. we got good gains going into Friday, so we'll have to see if that kind of holds. You know, if we got some turns in the marketplace, that could set the direction for next week. Obviously, every day we get close to the election, we're going to see more caution, more volatility, more positions squaring up, all those different types of things. Uh, so with that, the next, as a producer, take advantage of when there's some movement. 
you know, we watch corn markets here, soybean markets here. We're going to start getting into first notice day on those December contracts next month. That usually is a window we see some weakness. You've got some some gains here. Maybe look at some defensive strategies. If you're going to hold those bushels into the spring, I'd rather you're plenty long the market here with your bushels. Let's make sure we got some type of floor just in case things do fall apart on the export front. Where people can find you for your consulting services. Yeah, feel free to reach out, 800-334-9779. Shoot me an email at John H at totalfarmmarketing.com. And don't forget the website of ours, totalfarmmarketing.com. Thank you very much. Have yourself a great week. That's John Heinberg from Total Farm Marketing on today's program. This is close bell numbers of the commodity markets from Kyle Bumstead from Allendale Inc. January feeder cattle dollar plus one point seven zero zero closing at dollar two four five dot five two five December live cattle dollar plus one point three seven five closing at dollar one eight nine dot two five zero December lean hogs dollar dash one point five two five closing at dollar seven eight dot six two five. December corn plus two single quote for closing at four dollars and twenty one cents single quote for January soybeans plus zero single quote zero closing at ten dollars and five cents single quote zero December Chicago wheat plus three single quote zero closing at five dollars and eighty one cents single quote six December KC wheat plus one single quote for closing at five dollars and eighty seven cents single quote zero. Closing quotes provided by Kyle R. Bumstead Branch Office Manager Erickson, Nebraska Allendale, Incorporated the risk. Thanks to our friends from Allendale for bringing the final numbers of trade. Thanks to John Heinberg from Total Farm Marketing for today's program. We're running out of time on our show, but you can listen to our show on YouTube. And whenever you get your podcast... This been Back Roads of Illinois. I am Caesar Delgado. Have a great day.